Hi, and welcome to the Maria Sanchez Show on KDTV.com. Thank you so much for watching us. We know you've got lots of choices out there, and we do appreciate your eyes. In studio with us this day, we have Carol Nussbaum. Did I say it right? Yes. I'm notorious for mispronouncing names. No, that was perfect, Thank Maria. You. She's the president and CEO of the Cabrillo Music Theater. But not just that, we're going to get into the Cabrillo Music Theater, this jewel that we have Broadway in our backyard right here in Ventura County. But Carol is also an attorney. She's been a professor. She's a prolific writer. She is a wife. She is a mother. She is a civic uh, volunteer extraordinaire. And I'm really pleased to have Carol this day with us. And so thank you for taking the time out of your amazingly busy schedule well, to visit with us. Well, thank you for that magnificent introduction. Well, I know true. my mom is going to watch <laughs> this program. She's going to cavell, right? <laughs> Carol's really close with her mom, yeah. which is very uh, envious and admirable. Um, Carol is going to speak with us about Cabrillo Music Theater. So if you are familiar with it and if you've been to some of the productions, you probably don't know about the history of it. And I'm going to let Carol go into the history of Cabrillo Music Theater and when it is that Carol joined the Cabrillo Music Theater and then how it's taken off and become nationally renowned and recognized under your tutelage. Well, thanks so much. Cabrillo's actually been around for close to 30 years. It was a homegrown musical theater production company out of somebody's garage, in fact. Mm -hmm. And it grew and it grew a little bit and here and there, and it did some wonderful productions and then some not so wonderful productions. And sometime around 2005, unfortunately, it became very insolvent and basically bankrupt. Mm -hmm and owed a lot of money all over town, including in New York with the royalty houses. So I'd been asked by a number of civic leaders that I'd worked with in the theater in general to come and take a look and see if I might be able to help them out. And I spent some considerable time speaking with various people, actually three generations of people who had worked at Cabrillo, and learned that it was just a beloved organization in Thousand Oaks. So I recommended to the city and to the civic leaders that we should do our best and roll up our sleeves and try to make a go of it, at which point they said, go ahead. <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> which I did and spent the better part of a year and a half resolving its debt, which I did, and um, speaking with all of the creditors and the royalty houses and actually just working out a, a great arrangement in which we paid off all the debt and moved forward into kind of a go big or go home mode for the theater company and decided to take it really big. And we moved into four productions from three and we went from 28 performances to something in the range of 35. Wow. And we started to um, spend a lot of time on the productions, the quality, the quality control. I brought in a wonderful artistic director, Louis Wilkenfeld. I knew his work, and I started to bring on some fabulous staff. And building a company is very exciting and remains such. And at this point, here we are five years later, hard to believe. And we were nominated for 20 Ovation Awards. We've won six ovations, and that was the most of any theater company in 2008. We've won Business of the Year for two consecutive years. We were the People's Choice for the Daily News Award. We've won a Cliffy Award finalist in our outreach program, and I had the privilege of being nominated a finalist for Creative Director of the Year last year out of Las Vegas and a whole bunch of other really wonderful recognitions from the state and various places and frankly we just have at this point I would say close to 2,000 people in this region work with Cabrillo really? in one way or another in our productions around our productions and part of our outreach programs. Now, folks might not know that the Cabrillo Music Theater is in residence at the Thousand Oaks Civics Arts Plaza. And has that, I know it's been in your tenure, has that been always the case with the Cabrillo? It's, it became the resident musical production company before I came in. Uh, we have recently, and I mean last week, moved into the theater. So we're now actually in residence in the theater all year long. You mean your offices? Our offices oh, okay. are now in the theater, and we are moving towards 63 performances a year. We're the largest presenter in the theater, and we have many, many outreach programs. Last year for CATS, we had a program for abandoned and abused animals, and we received a very wonderful award 
from the Senate in recognition of that program. What, what, folks might not have heard of well, that it, because, I mean, how great is that? Here you have Cats, the Broadway, you know, phenom, coming to the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza, Plaza. Thank you very much to the Cabrillo Music Theater. But you tied it in with a benefit about abuse and abandoned animals, correct? Yes, it was actually um, a trigger for it, and it had taken me close to four years to get cats because we were the first regional company to be given the production, and in fact, Rogers and Hammerstein flew out and attended the show. They were in the orchestra pit the night we opened, and I told my my cast, "Don't worry, no I was pressure." Just say, no pressure there. And I decided that uh, with our very expansive outreach program, that one for the animals would be perfect. So we kicked it off uh, the night we opened, and I adopted the first animal, and he is a wonderful dachshund. His name is Albert Einstein. He was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a, a dog who did not have a good home and was paralyzed. Mm. So I took him a few months before the show. We put him into physical therapy with great people. And the night of the show, we opened with Albert in his tuxedo running across the stage. Mm. And the program was mighty successful. We had many, many animals adopted. And we took all of the money that we raised through souvenirs and we gave it to our rescue mission partners. We've made this a permanent part of our outreach, so we have five animal rescue missions on our website. We have a dog of the month, a cat of the month occasionally, and uh, everybody seems to really like the program. It's kind of handshakes all around. So here's a perfect example about, because the Cabrillo Music Theater is a nonprofit. Yes. So we have a nonprofit doing benefit for a nonprofit. Absolutely. So, and then it's a win, win, win. You got the community it. wins, the animals win, the organization wins. So, I mean, who could ask? That's why I love you. I mean, that's, it's like, <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> right? Well, you know, it's our community, and I'll tell you, I've gotten literally thousands of letters at this point thanking us for helping others where our patrons who might not have the time or think about going out to help others will donate to our program and tell me, you know, we feel like we're part of it now. We've, we're getting good at doing good. And so as a community, we can all feel really proud of what we've done with the outreach and, of course, our productions. Now, we're going to take a quick break in a moment, and we're going to go into the specifics of the program season that you have that we'll be launching in the fall of 2010. Oh, fine. Um, but <laughs> would you also share website information before we break? Yes. Well, you can reach us at Cabrillo Music Theater. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E dot -E com. And, of course, we're always on Ticketmaster.com. And then in terms of the capacity, because you always operate in the big theater, right? Yes. The we're Fred in Cavalier. the 1800-seat um, theater, which is the largest theater between L.A. and San Francisco, and it is a glorious place for any production and certainly for ours, which tend to be really Big. Yes, <laughs> uh, over the top. And of course, when the Civic Arts Plaza was built, I know acoustics were a big factor in how they created it. And yes, it and especially now it's particularly important because we have so many reporters and all sorts of media that attend all our shows, and they are very sensitive to the issue of sound. And fortunately, we get really high grades at the Cavalry from all the media that's you know reviewing us time and time again. So that's a lot to celebrate, the fact that you have moved in residence. With yes. That's, uh, I mean, because I visited with you at your offices that were on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, and so now you're right where you need to be, and you don't have to be going back and forth. Yes, and our neighbors definitely are aware we're there because our offices are set up like a set. So when you walk in, you get a hint of singing in the rain and... Oklahoma and oh, seven brides for seven brothers. We'll be having a little opening reception and of course we'll be inviting you, Maria. Thank you. And um, we're going to go into also who your sponsors are so we can make sure that they get uh, the appropriate recognition too. Thank because you. obviously that can't happen and I know several folks stepped up with good faith based simply on what it is that you promised you would deliver yes. and you did yes. and when people get in at the ground floor like that that's significant. Yes, yeah, so we were really fortunate to have those people, um, Which, some of whom were the ones that asked me to go forward. and They were um, sort of found it 
interesting that I then said, well, then you know, how about you go for it? <laughs> <laughs> so the Maria Sanchez Show on KDTV.com will return. We have in-studio guest Carol Nussbaum visiting with us. She is the president and the CEO of the Cabrillo Music Theater. Audrey Johnson. Be safe, be legal. Handsfree805.com. I am so delightful to be here in the studio of KDYTV.com. We're here to share with you and to educate with you what Handsfree805 is all about. You could send a text. You could read your email. You could make a phone call. Just this, your voice. Handsfree805.com is the latest, hottest technology that I've experienced in a long time, especially coming from South America and being here in America with the latest technology. So please give us a call, 805-754-2063. Be safe, be legal. <music> Hi, this is Peter Godinus from KDTV.com. I'm here to announce a new show that we're all excited about here called Meet the Boss. Now this is about all your friends and neighbors who own businesses and being able to support them in their causes and helping them stay healthy. So save this program in your favorites. Make sure you spread it out to your friends. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in Ventura County. show as seen on kdtv.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We're continuing our conversation with our in-studio guest, which is president and CEO of the Cabrillo Music Theater, Carol Nussbaum. And Carol, again, thank you for making the time to visit with us. Oh, my and pleasure. You are larger than life in every <laughs> single way, shape, or form. And I just get the biggest kick out of you because it, not to mention your children are exceptional. Your husband is tremendously oh, successful. You. You've had your own career uh, on the East Coast, back here now in, uh, I shouldn't say back, but you relocated to Southern California. You've taken our community by storm. In the last segment, Carol mentioned that the Cabrillo Music Theater came under her tutelage in 2005, so happy anniversary, five years later. Thank you. And now we're going to discuss this segment. We're going to talk about uh, the Cabrillo Music Theater's schedule of performances. And then in our next segment, we're going to talk about just what does it take to get a performance off the ground, and is this talent that's brought in from outside, or is it homegrown talent? And also, if you don't want to be on the stage, how you might be able to get involved with Cabrillo Music Theater, because you have a love of the arts. So that was a lot. A lot. So, now, the season, you said, are four productions. Yes, plus an extra bonus show. So we'll open the fall with a premiere at the Cavalier of Happy Days, a new musical, which comes off of the TV series, mm. which actually had 247 episodes for 11 years. Wow. It was a blockbuster, and it is a fabulous show, so much fun. And we even get uh, Fonz lessons for our lead, and we're going to have a special reception in honor of Gary Marshall, the producer, and the entire Happy Day gang. So we'll be having that opening night, and there'll be a number of those people attending, Scott Bayo in particular, mm -hmm. and Gary Marshall and his family. So we're very excited about that. Paul Williams may be there. Wow. So it's going to be wow. a true blast. So get ready to wear your saddle shoes and your socks, and come on down, because we're going to be having so much fun at the Cavalier. 
Yes. And that's how we're going to open the fold. Now, you mentioned these um, special receptions. Is that invited guests only, or is there a ticket level that you can purchase that gets you into those? Yes. Well, it will be a VIP reception, but we'll send out invitations, and there will be a limited number of four purchase tickets that you could attend right there in the founder's room. Johnny Rockets is going to be bringing in all of the burgers and hot dogs, and the gals are going to be serving them on roller skates. You know what? <laughs> the, the thing I love about Carol is, she, she not only is she bigger than life, she thinks outside the box. You, you, okay, who would be more perfect? Johnny Rockets, duh. <laughs> Girls on, excuse me, young ladies, women, whatever, on roller skates. How amazing. Gary Marshall is venerable. I mean, he, he, he is. his sister was in Laverne and Shirley. That's one of correct. the two. Penny Marshall. Penny Marshall. So, I mean, we're talking Hollywood legends, and you're getting them into our back door, our yes, backyard? Yes, actually, Gary Marshall has been just a prince about the whole thing, helping us with the production, and we have uh, really? people working on it. And it's just going to be fun, big time fun. And that's really what we're about, and that's what we try to provide for everybody who comes. Just a blast to get away for a couple of hours and enjoy something that's um, out of the box right. and really just a good old fashioned good time. Now, your productions, I know what they used to be. Are they different? They open on a. We open on Fridays. Okay. And, and then... we close the following Sunday. We usually have 10 performances. Though I've been adding performances to some of the shows, and for our summer sensation, The Sound of Music, we have a new breakthrough and we'll be going to a third weekend by popular demand. Because, and remember, in the early days, it was like Tuesday through Sunday. So yes. now you've started on the Friday prior? Right. In the, in the earlier days, they were doing five or six performances, and we do from 10 to 15 now. Goodness. So we have many more. And... I find that our community and the whole region loves the Saturday and Sunday matinees. Right. So I always want to be sure to do that. And we Thursday night is very popular, too. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing on and uh, moving on to a third weekend. So um, I know that you love to call this Broadway in our backyard, mm -hmm. which is the truth. <laughs> so we go from happy days to... Then in the winter slot... Um, Actually, the bonus slot, as we call it, we're going to have a special Christmas show. We did it for the first time last year. It was a big hit. It'll be from December 21st through the 24th, right before Christmas. It'll be a good old variety show with high-stepping and high-kicking dancers. And there will be a featured artist to be announced. And all of our performers who come from many of our shows, like Singing in the Rain, David Engel, Ovation Award winners, will be in that show. So it's a special show for four performances? It's actually six performances. Six in four days. We make it a little bit earlier, like 1 o'clock in the afternoon and 7 o'clock in the evening. It's the time when the kids are off from school and mm -hmm. everybody's looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. So we'll be very busy there. And, of course, we'll have our military night oh. in which we have a dedicated performance for the military and all the military come down at no charge and uh, we have a wonderful time and one of our mayor last year, Mayor Gillette, uh, he welcomed everybody from the military and he happened to be in the Marines so it was a really warm, touching welcome and uh, we've just been involved with the military for years now. It's wonderful and they're wonderful and it's really a beautiful sight to see all of the families from our military coming in and I've even gotten letters from mothers telling me that they're meeting their, usually their son and sometimes their daughter there who's either coming in from Iraq or departing to some other nation and how meaningful it's been to them to have this warm and fuzzy time that they can share together as a family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Oh, and Of course, thank I'm, you. I'm Ventura with us with two bases here. So we'll help you promote that as it, as it gets closer Thank to that, you. So to get yes. the word out to the military. Yes, and we filled every seat last year. We had 1,800 military. Wow. And the years prior to that, we actually went to the base and we performed there on their stage. It was very exciting, very much like a USO show. But it's a small theater that really had never been used in, in maybe five years because they didn't have the funding. Mm -hmm. So we ended up doing two performances. There was standing room only. And finally, last year, we were just thrilled to be able to bring it to our magnificent theater. And all of the troops came rolling in the night of the performance, dressed in uniform, thanking us, hugging one another, and just having a warm and friendly feeling. We had 
Santa in the hallway. We had our rescue dogs there. The mm -hmm. Huskies were there on the sleds. We had the dachshunds there with, as elves, and we handed out <laughs> candy to all the children. <laughs> Now, before we take our break, I think you have time for one more production to promote for the fall, or the, this next the, the season. Winter, the winter right. of 2011, I believe we're in it, will be The Marvelous Wonderettes. It just came off Off-Broadway, very successful. Roger Bean wrote it. He also wrote um, The Andrews Brothers. We did the prior year. Mm -hmm. And it is truly a blast from the past. We start out in the 50s, move into the 60s with 30 great songs from the era, Heat wave, lipstick wow. on your collar, um, it's my party, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of songs that will just throw you back in time to the to the prom, your high school prom with with Susie and Cindy Lou, and you'll feel like you're back in the glory days. We have the gals who were on the Off Broadway show coming in, and they will be in the show, and it's a lot of fun. Very light and airy, good for all audiences. Okay, so we. The, than the spring of 2010, 11. Well, now that I've got your attention, <laughs> we're bringing uh, you course. the winningest show of all times, the one that won the most Tony Awards, and that's the producers. So we're bringing that mm. in. We have already cast the leads. Larry Rabin will be Leo Bloom. He played the role. I shouldn't say played the role. He is, is Leo Bloom. <laughs> but he actually performed the role on Broadway mm -hmm. for quite some time. And it is a huge production. We'll spend close to four days just unloading and loading the sets into the theater. And it is a one of a kind, as far as I'm concerned, one you just can't miss. So we've got Happy Days, then the Four Day Christmas Spectacular, yes. then in the winter, the Marvelettes. And Marvelous Winterettes, uh, perfect. Winterettes. We're going to get you on stage <laughs> soon, Maria. <laughs> behind. <laughs> um, and then we have the producers. The producers. So we're going to take a break and when we come back we'll talk about the fourth slash fifth installment of the season and then I think it's really important that we let folks know, viewers know, how they can get involved, if they can get involved either on the stage, behind the stage. Oh or absolutely, th that would because be our pleasure. Obviously volunteers are important, um, I would imagine, especially the nonprofit in this day and age. And again, your website for everyone? Cabrillo Music Theater, and that's T H E A T R E dot com. And this is Maria Sanchez. In studio guest is Carol Nussbaum, president and CEO of the Cabrillo Music Theater, right here, Broadway in our backyard. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Audrey Johnson. Be safe, be legal. Handsfree805.com. I am so delightful to be here in the studio of KDYTV.com. We're here to share with you and to educate with you what Handsfree805 is all about. You could send a text. You could read your email. You could make a phone call. Just this, your voice. Handsfree805.com is the latest, hottest technology that I've experienced in a long time, especially coming from South America and being here in America with the latest technology. So please give us a call, 805-754-2063. Be safe, be legal. <music> Hi, this is Peter Godinas from KDTV.com. I'm here to announce a new show that we're all excited about here called Meet the Boss. Now this is about all your friends and neighbors who own businesses and being able to support them in their causes and helping them stay healthy. So save this program in your favorites, make sure you spread it out to your friends, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in Ventura County.
Welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show, as seen on KDTV.com. Thank you so much for your eyes. We do appreciate it. We're here about Ventura County, by Ventura County, and for Ventura County. And with that in mind, we have in studio Carol Nussbaum, who's the president and CEO of the Cabrillo Music Theater, Broadway in our backyard, right here in Ventura County. And Carol, why don't you remind the folks that it is the only theater in between... Well, it's the largest theater between Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's an 1,800-seat theater, and it's a glorious place to be. So in our last segment, we were speaking about the productions that are going on in 2010 and 2011. We got through the fall, the winter, the spring, and now into the summer, which is closing your season. Yes, and we call it our summer sensation. And indeed, it is this year. It is The Sound of Music which, as you may recall, became the number one movie of all time in 1965, replacing Gone with the Wind. It's considered by many the masterpiece of Rodgers and Hammerstein. And when you hear the music and you see the sets and you listen to the entire production, you can understand why it is just so beautiful that it could bring you to tears just to listen to it. And we're very excited about it. We have a um, casting going on now, actually, for all of our shows which is always an exciting process. Talk about American Idol. We get hundreds <laughs> of people from the region, from out of California. People come from across the country, and they get their two minutes to come in and audition before our production team and give it their best. And you would be amazed at the talent in our area. It's tremendous. Okay, really just to tremendous. clarify, what Carol has just said is that these are not touring, traveling productions that are coming to Ventura County like they do in Los Angeles. Correct. Right? Or in San no. Francisco. This is a production that Carol has gotten the authorization to launch because, of course, the books and everything are registered. Yes. You know, the vernacular. Yes. yes. But then, <laughs> with that in mind, auditions are held for folks locally or whoever wants to come here. But it's, it's so it's a crapshoot. Yes, it's, um, we've really become a mecca in that regard because we're producing the shows. Just as you rightfully point out, they're not tours that are coming through Los Angeles and Thousand Oaks and Ventura. They are produced, we produce them exclusively for the Cavalier Theater. And indeed, we've been asked many times to take our shows on the road to Vegas, to New York, but I've politely and uh, respectfully declined because we're producing a product that is really special and uh, it's definitely a high quality. We take a lot of time in auditions. We have auditions for three weeks in Thousand Oaks and three weeks in Hollywood. For our last production of Cinderella, we had more than 387 auditions, and you can figure out the numbers. <laughs> the amount of time. Yes, and it's really quite amazing the number of people who come in from outside of California and the talent is huge, starting at the youngest of ages. In fact, we've had a number of young people, as well as not as young people, who have started out at Cabrillo and ended up in some wonderful places, including Broadway and Vegas. In fact, Hogan Fulton, you may recall, we brought him in for mm -hmm. The Music Man. Mm -hmm. He was truly an unknown, but the moment you saw him, I mean the second you saw him, you knew that this young man was fated for stardom. In fact, we often laugh about his audition because my choreographer who at the time was uh, John Sharon, one of our in-house choreographers, a major talent. And when Hogan came in, he was dancing around and John came up to the table and said to me, now Carol, I know that this is one of your jokes, that this is really America's funniest home videos. And I'm going, no, John. He goes, he's dancing around, and John is exhausted at this point. He can't keep up. And he said, Carol, tell me the truth. You brought him in. He's a ringer. You want ice. And it turned out that Hogan was indeed just a, well, he's a prodigy, is the only way to put it. And we got him an agent, and we got him some actual dance lessons. And <laughs> mm -hmm. within about 10 months, he was in Australia, and he made it to the London opening of Billy Elliot. He was one of their stars. And that's actually not an uncommon story for Cabrillo in the last five years. We get just so many people with such talent. And we get a lot of veterans, too, that are coming from Broadway. Uh, Barry Pearl is just coming from the tour, and he's done a lot of work, and he's now working on a production of Happy Days. And 
We've had Norman Large and Christina Safford in our production of Cinderella that just ran, and they were both on Broadway in La Mis, Norman, and also in Singing in the Rain for Christina. And we are really fortunate, very privileged to have the talent that we gather in these auditions and ultimately the shows. And we're, you know, we're grateful, and they're all part of the Cabrillo family. So if folks are watching now and they want to know, how can I get involved, how can I help, how can I audition? Can they go to your website and that's how they'll get the information? Absolutely. Um, they can go to the website. They can call our offices at 805-497-8613. But most of all, to all those parents out there, if you have a child that's singing in the shower or dancing in the kitchen, don't turn an eye. Maybe look at what they're doing and consider that they may have that special gift because many of them do. And, and as I say, it's something that's magical and brings magic to others and it's a glorious thing to watch our community build this together which I be really believe we have done this together and we're on the radar you know we are watched across the nation we've made it to the headlines in New York our last production was on the website at Rogers and Hammerstein and they were busy Facebooking and Twittering our show, and we had an outreach program for the Blind Children's Center, and they put all the photos up there. And the media across the nation is reporting on Cabrillo and you know what we've been doing. So it's very exciting that uh, we help our region be on the map and that our whole com community has come together to do this in one way or another. They really have been part of this, so we're grateful and thank them for that. Um, Broadway in our backyard is really where it's at. And you always do musicals because you're a musical theater company. Yes. Uh, can't let a comment go on, um, let's see, validated. You mentioned <laughs> that theater is a visual experience and yet you had a benefit for blind children? Yes. Um, I decided this year that uh, I had been working for some time at bringing in a show that I thought would be of great value and enriching to some of the children who are at a disadvantage and that I focused in on the blind children and the blind children center and I met, met with them for a day. I went down there, I spent the day with these beautiful children who are really special in their determination and their tenacity. And having spent the day with them, I met with the head of the school and facilitators in the school and told them my plan, which was to have the children come before the show. And I was read them the story of Cinderella. And I brought in many things that were very tactile, like carousel horses with 3D. And I was wearing a dress that was made of four or five different materials so they could touch. <laughs> and they were super excited. The children were so excited that they had a calendar in their classroom where they marked off the days until they went to Cinderella. And they all came dressed in Cinderella ball gowns. And the boys came in princely wear. Sally Struthers came and greeted them. We had a whole lot of people come and greet them, and they all sat on my dress, and I read Cinderella to them. And they were the best audience. They knew every detail of the show before it happened, and they were all singing to themselves. And then afterwards, in their classroom, they talked about Cinderella and what she looked like, and many of them were describing me. <laughs> it was really interesting how they figured out everything. Really? Oh, yes. They are very on target, and the parents were there, faculty members. We, ha we had anticipated 30 of the kids, and we ended up with 130. <gasps> so we were very excited about it, and the children have all gotten together. They wrote us a letter, and that was sent, and we're going to be doing more things with them down the road. Again, the nonprofit helping the nonprofit helping the community is really and admirable. I, I also do wish to mention that Gelson's was wonderful, and they provided little lunches for every child and every family member, and they were really terrific about it. And our other sponsor, Valley Bakery, made Cinderella cookies and Cinderella cake, and all the kids. Well, they had cake all over their face when they walked in the theater. <laughs> yes, of course. So we they really did. <laughs> were grateful to them for doing that. And we have just a few moments. I know you have some other sponsors you might like to mention that have been instrumental. Yes. Well, all our sponsors have been terrific, and in particular, 
the sponsors who helped us get off the ground initially, which would include, in particular, Harry and Maureen Selvin of Selvin Properties. He's a great civic leader, uh, real estate developer, and he gave us our first offices, among other things, and we are forever indebted for him for what he and his wife have done for us. And then, of course, good old Brent's yes. Deli. We have all our opening night house parties there, more than they anticipated at this point. <laughs> we seem to be a very party company. Uh-huh. So um, they're busy with us. And 92.7 Jill FM, mm-hmm. of course, the Ventura County Star, has always been there for us, continues to be. And uh, let's see who else. We have Gemini Moving and Storage. They've been storing our sets. We have owned some sets, and they've been storing them for us, which has been really that terrific. Be tremendous. And then we have um, the Thousand Oaks Inn. They joined us, the Best Western Thousand Oaks Inn. They joined us a couple of years ago. They've been marvelous to us. The Alliance for the Arts has always been there for us. In fact, um, that's how I came to meet Cabrillo, through the Alliance. And Time Warner Cable. Perfect. Pretty. And then, of course, KDTV will be promoting, just yes. like we have done thank in our you. former incarnation. So, uh, no. Our new you. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carol Nussbaum, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Cabrillo Music Theater, our in-studio guest today, Maria Sanchez. Thank you so much for listening and viewing the Maria Sanchez Show. And thank you, Carol, for being thank here. Thank you, Maria.